African drums are talking. The symphony of the jungle night plays on. An undertone of humming insects, like a million violins muted by distance. The staccato bark of a jackal, the chatter of monkeys, and scurrying squeak of small denizens, backed by the soulful wail of a night bird. Furtive, unseen voices of the jungle. The bullfrog booms his incessant message. The darkness is peopled with invisible movement. Suddenly the earth vibrates to the roar of a lion. A blank, dead silence follows. The baton is held poised. Not an instrument speaks. Every creature holds its breath. The world listens. Then one by one, as if guided by the hand of a master, each instrument is brought again into the weird symphony of a jungle night. This is Africa. If Bobby, a beautiful native girl and mistress of the arts of hypnotism, shows Professor Edwards an antique cup of solid gold, which she says is part of a buried treasure lying in the whispering forest of death. If Bobby urges him to start for the forest immediately, and after a week's travel, the professor and his party together with Ifabi, leaving the moonlit plain over which they have just passed, enter the whispering forest of death. Eerie place. I can swear there are voices coming from all around it. Can't you hear them, Father? I know what you mean, Lorna, yes. But you mustn't think of it that way. No matter what the natives say, we know it's the wind through those tall trees overhead. But what causes it, sir? We've been in forests before and not heard that peculiar voice-like effect. Well, I don't think I can give you an explanation, but why think of it? No wonder the natives won't come near the place. Even the vegetation looks too green. And those patches of red flowers we saw as we came in... Oh. They look like splashes of blood. They are called in your tongue the flowers of the dead. That's a comforting name for a place like this. I thought you said nothing lived in here, Bobby. Plenty of jungle noises about. It is in the heart of the forest that the breath of sleep comes to all. Oh, I'm very tired, Father. Do we have to go much farther before making camp? No, Lorna, we don't have to, but... I was hoping we'd come across the stream before camping for the night. But I guess Jack and I can go on a forage and fill the bottles. And Goro, you stay here and make camp. I will not. Come on, Jack. I'd like to get this job done. We've allowed the water supply to get too low. Don't be long, Jack. Okay, Lona. Do you think there's water ahead, sir? Well, there should be from the lay of the ground. Stand still and listen. Yes. That's running water. I couldn't say which direction the sound's coming from. Confounded whispering seems to throw sound at you from all directions. Well, if we follow this animal trail, I think we'll find it. What about those two brothers we were supposed to follow, sir? I probably seems to have forgotten all about them. We certainly haven't been keeping on any given trail for days. Well, I think that was just an excuse to get us out of the village as quickly as possible. As it was, we only just managed to get out. I've no doubt whatever that Malini's death came from knowing too much of Ifabi's intentions. But the keepers of the treasure, was that just a story to back up her claim? No, I don't think so. We did follow the trail of two men at the start. No doubt they were what Ifabi claimed them to be. But she intended them to get as far ahead of us and do their job and leave the forest before we entered. That young lady has been in this place before. Why, what makes you think that, sir? Well, she knows too much about it. She was very definite about us entering at night. And she watched for a whole day from that plateau before she was satisfied we could come in tonight. Waiting for the two brothers to leave, eh? I think so. She wouldn't allow us to light a fire all day yesterday. Well, and your hunch about the water was correct, sir. Hmm? See, that looks inviting. <laughs> I'd like to take a swim. Well, better fill up the bottles and get back. Wait a bit, Jack. There's something happening over on the other side of the stream. It's an animal coming down to drink. No animal makes a racket like that when it moves, except an elephant. It's 
something that has no fear of being disturbed. Keep still. Here it comes. Good Lord, sir. What is it? I don't know. Don't move for your life, Jack. I've never seen anything like it. Looks like a huge gorilla, but it isn't. It's coming over to the side. Better shoot, sir. No. The thing looks half human. Keep still, it might pass us. Heaven's name, what is it? I don't know, Jack. It's lucky we were downwind from it. Fill the bottles while I keep an eye open. We've got to get back quickly. The thing seemed to be covered with white paint. It walked upright, too. Yes, fairly upright. I think it's a human being, Jack. One that we've read of in books but haven't seen. The thing had a human face. No for it, of course. Here. Give me three of those water bottles. They're apt to get heavy when they're full. Oh, thanks, sir. But how do you account for the white paint or whatever it was covering its body? Well, it's probably a clay taken from the ground, and the person in it gives it that white look in the dark. They very likely prepare it before putting it on the body. They, sir? Do you think there are more of them around here? Well, it's possible, Jack. Science seems to have missed this place. The ordinary African native won't come in here. There are legends about it that have been handed down for hundreds of years, and that's all we know about it. Those two keepers of the treasure, as they call them. They come here once a year. Surely if they'd see an African like... native a trust like that and he'd die before revealing anything about the place. Yes, I'm almost positive the thing was human. It had a decided chin which takes it out of the animal class. Say, are we on the right trail, sir? Hmm? Something seems to tell me we've wandered off. That's Lana. Come on, Jack. Straight ahead. Do you think that thing could have come this way? It might have. There's light over there on the ground. Well, this is where we left them. It's Lorna's flashlight. Well, where's Nguro? Snap that light off, Jack. Stand still a minute. Lorna. Lorna. Nguro. Are there any tracks around that we can follow? Put that light on again. We'll look. Good heavens, sir. That thing's been here. Look. Yes, I see. It leads this way. Come on. No need for the light. It's left a trail like an elephant. But it couldn't take the three of them. The two women, perhaps, but uh, Nguro. I can't understand. Nguro's tracks led off to the side. But he wouldn't leave Lorna if the whole army came along. I know. That's what puzzles me. It's a human being we're following, Jack. Of that, I'm certain. And I've never known Nguro to run from a devil, let alone a man. Here's a clearing, sir. Which way do we go? Put that light down here. This damp earth will show us. Look. There's its mark. Heading across the clearing. Yeah. Keep in a straight line. We'll pick it up when, where it enters the bush. Well, there are no tracks left by Lorna or Fabi. No, they're both being carried. Oh, there's where it went in. Lorna. Lorna. Nguro, where are you? Nguro, trackum nyana muto. Here, Buana, come. Nguro, wait. Where's Lorna? What's happened? Nguro, go for long grass for Missy bed. Here, Missy call. Track him, Nyana Muto. Uh, he knows no more than we do, Jack. Less, in fact, he hasn't even seen it. Why do you call him Gorilla Man, Nguro? Track him, say man. Say Nyana. Uh, well, that's as good a description as any. Trail him, Nguro, and trail him fast. Aye, Buana. Nguru was gathering grass for Lorna's bed when the gorilla man, as he calls it, came upon the women. Must have seen him or heard him, which means that those things can move silently if they want to. Well, if it saw Nguru, why didn't it attack him? Well, it probably saw the girls first and... Well, don't think of it, Jack. There's an end to this trail somewhere. We may have to give some more people their first introduction to gunfire. The ground breaks away in front, sir. Nguru's going downhill. Well, he's come to the end of the underbrush. Going to be a little more difficult to follow. Yeah, this must be the edge of the forest. Trees stop down there. Now look, there's water ahead. I can see the moonlight on it. There must be a lake. Well, what is it, Dungoro? Kilindi Buana. Him Nyana Man. Keep back on the trees, Jack. 
The guru says there's a hut out there. Let's take a look. Careful. Great Scott. Do you see what it is, Jack? Well, the lake is dotted with huts raised out of the water. They're standing on platforms supported by piles. Lake dwellers, Jack. It's a perfect village of lake dwellers. See the bridge that leads out to each one, eh? Yes. And the fires at the end of the platforms. You can see the people sitting around some of the fires. Man, this is marvelous. But Lorna, sir. Uh, uh, I... Oh, good Lord, yes. Oh, I'm sorry, Jack. I guess I was... Hmm. Well, do you see any extra movement on any one of those platforms? No, sir. They all look alike to me. Well, I guess if there's any excitement, it's died down by now. But we can't stand here kicking our heels. We've got to do something. Steady, Jack. We can't rush things. If we're going to get them out alive, we've got to do things quietly. Any trail in front of them, Guru? No track, Buana. We come no good too quick. Why, were we following the wrong trail? Well, we can't have been. It led straight here. Possibly one made earlier in the day. Keep calm, Jack. That man wasn't five minutes ahead of us. From the look of the sky, no cloud has passed across the moon for some time. But there'll be one in a moment. See? Now keep your eyes on the edge of the forest down that side. When Goro and I watch this way. If you see anything moving, let us know. All right, sir. I hope you're right. But wouldn't Lorna keep calling out and hope that we'd hear her? Uh-huh. She's probably fainted and knows nothing of what's going on. If Bobby wouldn't call out to please Satan. Now keep your eyes open. There goes the cloud over the moon. 